Hi, my name's Steve Howes and welcome to my latest blog where we're going to be looking at um, configuring a PDM project to replicate a handheld heart communicator. So this is a page out of a Siemens manual for a Citrans LR250 and it's, it shows you here that you need 250 ohms in your loop. I need to have uh, uh, that resistance in the loop for the heart to work. So a common mistake is most applications when you go to site, your cable length and the resistance of the input card is already in the region of 250 ohms. It may be even greater than that. Um, so you add your 250 ohm resistor and if it takes you over 700 ohms, then there's a chance that the heart uh, communications won't work. So there's another reason there that we have to be careful of. Um, there's others. Uh, noisy power supply. So, so normally when you're using PLC input cards it's fine um, but there are some uh, lower cost models on on the market that you have to be wary of. Uh, hazardous area barriers uh, you know a lot of those um, on the market will allow heart to pass through but again the cheaper models won't allow heart to pass through to the safe area which is where you'll be connecting so you have to take all of that into to account so one of the one of the biggest mistakes people make is they go straight into PDM without proving the heart communications first okay so if you use the recommended heart modem from Siemens um, you get a, a program with it so if we go to, this is a Windows 10 machine and type in Viator, you can see there Viator check, okay? And the nice thing about this is when it powers up, the first thing it will it will tell you is, because this is a USB device, is the COM port that uh, Windows has assigned to that device. So my advice is once you start using this um, USB modem is to try and always plug it into the same USB port. Um, it will make sense as we, we go along. So out of the box, the device should have a heart address of zero. So we click on check heart device zero. It hasn't got a full um, EDD library backing it up. It's a very basic tool, but it knows it's a Siemens device and it's got the tag of the device. I can also read the pri primary variable. So I can see here, I can check with my display, but um, normally you know, that should be okay. If somebody has changed the heart address, well, if we're doing heart multi-dropping, our limitation is you know address zero to fifteen. So as soon as you change the heart address from zero to another value, it's in multi-drop mode. But you can click on this check all heart devices, and that will that will scan all of the um, heart addresses, uh, just in case somebody's changed it. So we're happy with that. The important thing is before you go into PDM is to close this program down because this does grab hold of your, your communication port for the heart modem. So if you've got this open in the background and then you go to PDM, then it's not going to work. So make a mental note here of COM port 3 and then we're going to open up PDM. So we, with no projects open, we're going to start a new project. And it makes sense to call this heart master. So if you've got a single tag license, you can open this and do a save as, so you're not creating it all the time. So there's my project. I'm just going to put that to large icons so you can see it better. And there's nothing there. So the first thing I've got to do is insert a new communication network. And then if I click on assign type, there's a few here. A heart server is not what we're after. That's for heart multiplexing, and we'll cover that in another video. We've got a heart modem, so we insert that. Now, the thing that will catch you out is that this defaults to COM port 1 for your USB heart modem. So if we click on the PC, we can see the interface for the COM port. So if we do object properties on that, and you should only have to do this once if you keep plugging your, your heart modem into the same port. So we were COM port 3. Okay. 
So that's my network saved up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an instrument to it, show you how easy it is to add an instrument now. So with the heart uh, network selected, you can rename these by the way, this is purely text at this stage. So I can insert a new object, heart address zero, and then if I assign the device to type, and I have a full library, so I can go through here and manually select it. But if I have the EDD, I can click, click on device identification. I know the communication's already good. And this has found the uh, the new Siemens Citrens LU240 probe. So I can add that into the network. Okay. So once I have that in to prove the comms, it's just a simple case of go to PDM, update diagnostics. And I can see that here I have an issue because again, it's sat on my carpet and it's not getting a signal because it's not firing into free space. And, and from here, I know the communications is working. So that has set up my project ready for me to, to go in and have a look at more detail so I can open this. So I'm not going to go into this in, into a massive amount of detail but the important thing is the first thing you should do when you communicate to any device is to upload the parameters because if you download first you're going to be downloading all of the default parameters into the unit and if somebody if it's only a simple change that you've had to make you may have created yourself a lot more work so always do an upload first you can always save that project and close it down so you've got that project as a backup just in case it all goes wrong or you can do a file export because you can then import uh, and download so now that has finished it's formed its upload it will update and I get these symbols here this is showing me that it has communicated to the device and it's uploaded all the parameters as I said if you've got your parameters and you want to save them with the single tag license and the basic with the extended we can export these parameters I'm just going to export them onto my desktop so you can see what they look like and there's two reasons you might want to do that. You're generating a report for somebody who hasn't got PDM, so they want to see the parameter set. But also, you can store these in a central location. Um, if there's a few service engineers working, rather than just keeping it on your PC, have a central location with all these backed up. Um, and then when you go to site, you can retrieve those and make sure the parameters uh, stay the same so we can see there it's been successful with the export so if I come out of here you will see a couple of files that it's generated so this is my mapping for my HTML so if I click this on this is the actual parameter XML it will open up well it's, it's opened up um, Windows Explorer there's my parameter set so I can import that at a later date if everything goes wrong and I can see my, my device status. So I'm hoping you got some use out of that and we'll look at um, other uh, methods of configuring PDM on other communication protocols such as Modbus and Heart Multiplexers in, in other blogs.